Well, and we plan on doing a rally with the, uh, uh, with Jessica and the rest of us. We plan on doing a rally with uh, the West Philadelphia schools um, to bring all the parents together because what happens is you have a school in one location and a school in another location. They don't know what's happening in one school or the other. There might be great things happening in one school. They have no idea that, they're, uh, that that is possible in the other school. Um, we have a, a garden at our school, and we have just gotten grants. Um, and we're, we apply for grants, and we also have just gotten grants on visualization programs. We've got a 10,000 CASO grant, and we have a SciWest grant that we just uh, was able to get. A lot of other schools might not know that that money is available, and they think that they are hit a roadblock that, well, I have to wait for the school board to provide funds. Um, that's not actually true. So that's why we're going to get the rally, um, have a rally where we can all meet, network, uh, explain to each other, hey, I'm doing this at this at my school. Wow, that's great. You know, uh, how can I get that into my school? Uh, that's one of the key things is, is that when we when we rally and network, what we're going to do is create a manifesto and have something in print and have something that is that the press sees. Uh, we, we created a, a press re release and we'll be doing that. Um, what we need to do is, is shame the people that are in power that uh, these parents are coming out, creating the change. Um, meetings mean nothing because meetings happen and then the same thing happens a month later or a year later or five years later. So instead of just creating meetings, we have to network, create some concrete document that says this is where we're going, this is what we're going to do. And then they have to, to either say yay or nay, or they have to follow the guideline, or they have to say that um, we, have, we can go back and say, well, we had this meeting, this is what we planned, this is what our manifesto is, this is what our program is. Are you following that? Um, this is our five-year plan. This is our 10-year plan. Um, it has to be goals, and we, once we reach, the, reach those um, um, deadlines, then we have to go back and say, where do we uh, go from here? We haven't reached it, how do we change that? Meetings, um, you know, uh, just, just creating things for uh, paperwork to happen doesn't create, doesn't do anything, because I see the same thing happening over and over again. Uh, so we have to create something on paper that says that this is our goals, and then once we reach those um, deadlines, then we have to uh, make a decision on it. How do we go from there? Um, well, one of the things that we can do to help public schools out is to, one, like fight for theme-based learning such as the Business Academy and the Urban Leadership Academy and the Ninth Grade Academy and the Auto Academy, which we have in West Philadelphia. With these theme-based learning, we have like-minded people together that can set people up for their future. And like, and not only that, but we should also fight for small-based communities, like small learning communities, because it takes a lot of stress off of the teachers. It's like smaller classes without like 30 people running around or 50 people running around. Like you can easily learn and with those two things. Another thing that we're, we have been working on, <coughs> excuse me, at, at the SAC of West Philadelphia High School is getting our politicians involved. They must be made aware of everything that's going on in our communities because these are the people that represent us. They're supposed to be initially saying what we want. So if they're not doing that, then we need to get them more involved. I would urge everyone to find out who your local person is in the area where you live or where your school is being affected. and get them aware of what, what, we're, what we're doing, what we're trying to accomplish or anything. We're making bus trips up to Harrison and even Albany to get educators involved because you know they wanna be involved, they just don't know how to help us if we don't say anything. So that would be my thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, I know that in cities, different cities like in New York City and also Chicago, there are, um, some really established coalitions of parent community-based organizations, teacher organizations, student um, organizations, 
um, creating something like a grassroots education movement where there are points of unity where we say these are the 10 most pressing things, most pressing problems and those solutions to that that we need in our schools so that education is meaningful, so that education is relevant, so that education is not alienating, so that our schools don't just criminalize students and set teachers up to be jailers and <laughs> students up to be criminals or um, set us all up to uh, maintain uh, bubbling in mindless, mind-numbing, uh, scripted curriculum because we have to get the results on the tests um, or where we all have to be fighting amongst each other because there's the, the, the funding is inequitably distributed or that when our schools are set up, well, if there are, you could argue that our schools are set up to fail and then when they, they do, they, they get taken over by outside providers that don't have a relationship to the community and don't have any accountability to the community as we saw countless times this past year and I'm sure folks from West can talk about um, what, what's down there. Um, but I think a really exciting next step would be to figure out, yeah, what are some points of unity that different groups from around the city um, and different um, constituencies really share and then how do we move forward I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think examples are, are most important um, because as they said in the film, they discussed about how the expectations of um, children were, what the expectations were, uh, that they had lower expectations because they were from some type of community uh, where they, uh, they, use, uh, you know, they use the term successful. Successful is just reaching a goal. Um, it's not about how much money you have or, or uh, how much wealth you accumulated is called reaching a goal. Um, so if they look at a def, uh, dictionary to find out what the actual word successful means. And to give examples, because as you see, this young um, gentleman down here, he's from West Philadelphia High School. If you looked in the newspaper and you um, read about West Philadelphia High School, you have a certain viewpoint, or a lot of people would have a certain viewpoint. I know about the X Prize. Uh, I know that they were on the, uh, the final um, um, judging for the Progressive um, X Prize, which was the, uh, 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 the, uh, the vehicle that they built that uh, they were trying to get the, um, go 100 miles to the gallon. And they were one of the finalists. Um, this is with against colleges, businesses, with a lot more funding. That's what's coming from there. And you see the way this young man is talking. Um, if, you, if he didn't have West Philadelphia on his um, shirt, you would think he was from Lower Marion School. How many other kids are exactly like that? I see them every day at, when I'm working with these kids at, at my school. But they're called underprivileged. Um, they talk about AYP, average yearly progress, average. Using wording like that, um, that gives a kid the mindset that, you know, I'm average or I can't reach those goals. Um, once they give examples or they see examples or they're um, given expectations, that's when they rise. If they're given expectations here, that's where they'll go to. If they're given expectations here, that's where they'll go to. My son doesn't have to go to Lee. My son can go anywhere. He can go to private school. He can go to a charter school. I choose to send him to Lee and then I participate. And I created um, a model. Um, my model was teachers teach, students study, and parents participate. And that's what my main goal is. And the school actually adopted my model. They changed the model from which they had last year and changed it to that because they believe in that, is that those three things are what it needs to make an excellent school. So examples like that, people working together, participation like this, a turnout like this, shows that people are interested. Uh, I bring books from the free library that are free. Um, they, uh, on the uh, fourth floor, uh, the main library between one and four, they have books, good books to go. I put about 150 books into the school. I put it on the counter, it says courtesy of the Home and School Association. Within two days, all those books were gone. So you can't tell me that kids aren't w wanting to read. And this is, they were kids books, they were teenager books, um, they were Moby Dick, et cetera. 
kids were picking them up, and these are kids, a lot of them people were saying that had problems, don't read, have bad um, grades. Um, that's not what I see. And once we show the people that are in power that uh, this is what is actually in the school, make your decisions according to what the possibilities are, then we can make a change.